Hello, hello guys, and welcome to my top 10 worst sets in ESO video. So we're gonna go through all of the terrible, terrible sets that this game has to offer and talk a little bit why they're so terrible. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and let's jump into it. All right, guys, so let's start with set number 10. We have Glorious Defender. This is a heavy armor set from the Maelstrom Arena. And it was chosen for the 10th worst set in the game for this reason. Um, we've got a pretty decent 2-3-4 piece. I mean, max health, max health, weapon damage. Not terrible for kind of an offensive tank, I guess. But then on the 5 piece, when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack, you have a 9% chance to gain 100% chance uh, to dodge the next attack. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Off a of light or heavy, that means if you throw out a weave every single time that you that you use a skill in 10 seconds of combat you're going to have a well all you'll almost have one attack dodged i mean it'll, it'll be like more like you know 91 percent so in 11 seconds of combat you should see at least one attack dodged yeah not super great especially when there are much better alternative tank options than this set Anyway, let's move on to number nine. We have Hatchling Shell. Now, this is another heavy armor set, but this guy is from Shadowfen, so it's pretty easy to get this one, opposed to Glorious Defender, which is a difficult set to get. Maelstrom Arena, too. Ugh, yuck. Anyway, Hatchling Shell, we've got Physical Resist, Spell Resist, Healing Taken, so we're looking at a very defensive uh, kind of tank set here, and then we've got gain a damage shield that absorbs 5k damage every 15 seconds Um, yeah, 5k is a really small damage shield, especially in PvP. That's 2,500 damage shield on a 15 second cooldown I don't know. There's just so many other sets that you could use that give you better damage shields than this I mean, there's a light armor set that will give you a damage uh, a damage shield when you crit heal. There is a medium armor set that gives you a damage shield parabellum every 10 seconds or so, and it's twice the size of this thing. So there you have it, guys. Absolutely terrible damage shield. And then on top of it, it's weird to have this five piece on a physical spell resistance set. I mean, this is the kind of five piece you'd expect to see on... I don't know, a, a Magicka set, for example, but uh, it, it's just counterintuitive, you know, to put damage shields on top of that increased physical spell resist. So it's like the set itself doesn't even make sense. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, guys. In number eight, we have Buffer of the Swift. Now, this is a light armor Cyrodiil set. It has been in the game a long time, actually since the game came out. So it's a very, very old set. Um, we've got two-piece maximum health, three-piece healing taken, four-piece reduced damage that uh, you take from enemy players by 5%. Very interesting four-piece there, so it's actually, like, looking pretty decent. Good two, three, four-piece. Um, that's a rare four-piece there. Only a few sets in the game have that. But then we get to the five-piece. When you take damage from a spell, you have a 10% chance to gain a damage shield that absorbs 2,580 damage for six seconds on a four-second cooldown. That is such a small damage shield. I mean, we just talked about how small the hatchling shell damage shield was at 5k. This is half of that at 2.5k. Oh my gosh. And then on top of it, this thing is only going to proc off of incoming spell damage. And it's only a 10% chance to proc when you take an incoming spell attack. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Oh, if, if only it had a good five piece, a very interesting four piece on here, but it's such an awful five piece, but that four piece is the only reason that this set is not higher up on this, or sorry, further down on this list. So let's move on to number seven. We have Ashen Grip. This is a crafted set and we're going to have quite a few crafted sets featured in this video simply because there are some pretty freaking bad crafted sets in this game. Anyhow, let's take a look at Ashen Grip. Um, max health, weapon damage, weapon crit. So a little bit of a, a offensive kind of tank spec, I guess we're looking at. And then five piece. When you deal direct melee damage, you have a 10% chance to breathe all fire to breathe fire damage to all enemies in front of you, doing 12 or sorry 1,200 fire damage. And this is on a four second cooldown. Um, direct damage attacks. Let's think about that. That is so few attacks. That's not any AoEs. It's direct melee damage attacks, so that doesn't include any ranged stamina abilities. I'm talking only direct melee damage 
attacks. So stamina based direct damage attacks. So we're looking at light and heavy attacks and then a handful of skills that count as melee based direct damage attacks. Yeah. This is the worst proc set in the game. It does so little damage. I mean, there are so many other proc sets that literally do eight times more damage than this that you could use. But uh, I guess this is so bad because it's a two, two trait crafted set. Anyhow, let's move on to number six. We have another crafted set, the elusive, the mighty Kvach Gladiator. Now, I hate this set. And uh, the reason I don't like this set is because it is like a really weak version of elegance for a stamina build. So we've got the weapon crit, weapon crit, weapon damage. Not a terrible 2-3-4 piece, however, not rare. We see it in Nightmother's Gaze as well as Hunting's Rage for crafted sets, and it's quite common in non-crafted as well. So we've got the five piece when your opponent is under 25% health, you add 1800 weapon damage to your light and heavy attacks. Yeah. I mean, this is only going to work for maybe dual wield, and even then, it's not even that much. 1800 weapon damage is like 20% damage increase, so this is seriously like having an elegant set that only works when your opponent's about to die. Not only that, but stamina abilities have tons of executes. Most people who play stamina builds have great swords in PvP, so they have access to executioner anyway. I mean, this is just... <laughs> It's not a wasted five piece, but it's pretty darn close to a wasted five piece. So let's move on guys to number five. We have Shalidor's Curse, another crafted set. Yeah, maximum health healing taken max health. So we're looking at uh, a defensive kind of tank set here, but this five piece. So this is like a max HP tank set is what I would say. And look at this five piece. When you're under 50% health, dealing damage with a light attack heals you for 559 health. Really? Like, it's not, it's not higher than that. It's 559 health, and it's only on your light attacks. So, this is literally no healing. I mean, I don't even know what to say. This is awful. Just awful, awful healing. Especially since this set looks like it's favoring towards a max HP build. I mean, if you have 60k health... How many light attacks will it take for you to heal yourself when you're almost dead? Right? Let's think about that. Anyway, terrible, terrible set. Let's move on. So this is pretty much a wasted five piece at this point, actually. Pretty darn close. But when we get to number four, we get to, well, something even better. The next crafted set on this, so many crafted sets, Oblivion's Foe. We've got all three regens in the two, three, four piece. So that's pretty sweet. I mean, that's an attractive two, three, four piece. But then we see the five piece. Increase the damage of your soul trap ability by 100%. Let's look at how strong our soul trap ability is just to kind of get a feel for this set. We've got 2,400 base damage on our soul trap. Now this does not affect soul strike. This, is, this set only affects soul trap. It will not make your soul strike hit harder. So we are on a stand build, so that's a very low tooltip. So let's compare it to another magicka ability. Vampire's Bane, coming in at 4,734 flame damage over a similar period of time. So, pretty much, well, more, because it has the initial damage too. So, double the damage off Vampire's Bane in comparison to Soul Trap. So, what this set effectively does is it makes Soul Trap a viable skill, sort of, for your build. Now, I've used this set in the past. I've played a build that, you know, is a damage over time, Magicka Nightblade. And I used Oblivion's Foe on swap, so I didn't even have it on both bars, only on a back bar. And it was terrible. It did so little damage. On top of it, when I swapped off the bar, I lost the bonus effect that it gave. So it just ticked for less damage on my, on my off bar. And yeah, I'm not really sure what to say. This was a super underwhelming set when I tried it. And I really wanted to give it a, sh a chance. But it is one of, if not the worst crafted set in the game in the game actually you know what it is it is the worst crafted set in the game according to me this is the worst one anyway let's move on to number three we have immortal warrior now this is a heavy armor set you get from sanctum of Phidia. Uh, healing taken, max health, healing taken, so we're looking at a defensive kind of spongy tank build. And then we see the five piece. When you die, you turn into a statue for three seconds. While you're a statue, you're immune to all negative effects but can still be healed. This can occur once every 20 minutes. 
So yeah, this is an awful set because there's so many more sets in the game that do, that do so many better things than this set. So let's just grab Phoenix as a first example here. The Phoenix set does the same thing when you die, you become immune, you know, to the negative effects for the three seconds, but with the Phoenix set, you explode for flame damage and heal yourself for 17k HP after the effect is over. And it's on a 10 minute cooldown, so not only is it uh, a worse set than the Phoenix set, but it has an even bigger cooldown. So there you have it guys, Immortal Warrior, probably one of, if not the worst heavy armor sets you could run. Looking at pretty much a wasted five piece on this. Seriously, you could run anything else. The only time I could see this set being good is for if you're like, if you're clumsy and you die a lot, but even then it's on a 20 minute cooldown. So try not to be clumsy more than once every 20 minutes. Anyhow, let's look at number two. We have two sets, actually. Number two, they're coming in here together. So that's because they do roughly the same thing. So we have the Deadly Strike set here, which is a two-piece max health, three-piece weapon crit. And this is not like agility that gets the bonus two, three-pieces on it. This is just a regular two, three-piece max health weapon crit. Yeah, this is awful. These aren't, e these aren't even two traits you'd want side by side in like a five piece set. Forget about a two piece set where you get to choose them. Better go with agility. And then we have Deadly Strike's counterpart for Magicka, Wrath of the Imperium. Only slightly better because it offers spell damage, spell crit, which is two offensive stats. But yet again, you're much better off going for willpower here or just any other three-piece set. Seriously, there are other three-piece sets that do cool things and different kinds of things. But this just does nothing. It just gives you kind of crappy stats. And you could pick willpower, which would give you way more base stats anyway. So there you have it. Deadly Strikes, Wrath of Imperium. Seriously really old sets from the game that kind of got washed over and I, I wouldn't recommend using them on any build. I would go with seriously anything else. And now we have, ladies and gentlemen, the singular worst set in the Elder Scrolls Online, according to me, Spellunker. Now, I've ripped on this set before and I will continue to rip on it. We've got max stam, stam recovery, weapon damage. Very attractive 2, 3, 4 piece, especially for the worst set in the game. But then we get to that 5 piece and it just, it's seriously the most wasted 5 piece in the game. I don't know of a 5 piece that has so little use. I mean, I there, we'll, we'll go through what you can possibly do with this build. We'll, we'll talk about it. 400 weapon and spell damage to your undaunted abilities. That's a nice little bonus. When an ally uses one of your undaunted abilities, you restore 1500 stam. Okay, well, let's look at those undaunted abilities then. Let's see what we're talking about here. Blood Altar. Now, keep in mind that your allies have a cooldown on how often they can synergize your abilities, and it's about 15 seconds for most things. So if we use Blood Altar here, it could be good if we have a lot of people synergizing our Blood Altar. However, this is a stationary ability, so this is only really good if you're holding a spot, and all that the set really does is allow your Blood Altar to return a little bit of stamina, if people synergize it. So you're relying on other people here to get this set to work for you in sort of a niche, niche situation anyway to begin with. Trapping webs. Now this actually deals some decent damage, so it can take advantage of the damage bonus as well as take a bit of advantage of the synergy bonus. However, trapping webs is just kind of a really crappy skill. It's not really good for PvE. It doesn't add a lot of damage to your rotation. And for PvP, I mean, outside of incredibly well-coordinated duo gameplay, I can't see trapping webs being used effectively by anybody, really. So there you have it. Just uh, unfortunate that this is the skill that it can buff, but it's just such a useless skill. And then we have Inner Fire, Inner Beast. This does no damage. This is not a viable damage skill. This is only a pull for a boss. So absolutely wasted for this set. And you only get one synergy off it. So I would say wasted yet again. Then we've got Bone Surge, Spike, Bone Shield. Same kind of issue with Blood Altar here. So this is a good ability, and you could take advantage of the synergy to have a lot of sustain on your Bone Shield. However, you're relying on the fact that you have a lot of allies around you synergizing it. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot, because they have a 15 second cooldown. So that means you need a minimum of four allies around you in order to keep at least one synergy going every single time you could possibly have one. So there you have it. It's just not really working out. And then the ultimate troll, 
Necrotic Orb. Doesn't matter what morph you pick here, this is a Magicka ability. So it gets the bonus from the 5 piece, but the 2, 3, 4 piece are wasted. Therefore, you're better off going for an offensive Magicka set instead of even bothering with Spellunker. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The worst set in ESO. Spellunker. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions for terrible sets um, that you think that I missed or that I could have added to this video, feel free to throw them in the comment section. And if you guys have any weird builds using these sets that you guys want to bring up, well, feel free to share them in the comment section too. I'd love to hear how you can make these awful sets viable. And finally, just a quick shout out to our sponsor, What the Fast Gaming, a VPN for gamers. If you have crappy ping and you want to maybe fix it, give it a try. It's free to try out. Link in the description as always. Have a great night, guys.